I am standing in the spot where the earliest action took place during the first Battle of Bull Run on July 21st, 1861. It was known, of course, in the South as Manassas, later on First Manassas, because of a later battle fought here in 1862. But it was here, on July 21st, 1861, that at that point in American history, the bloodiest battle ever fought uh, in American history took place uh, between the armies of the North and the South in what everyone thought would be the lone large battle of the American Civil War. It was thought to be so decisive beforehand that congressmen and women, people of society, came from Washington, D.C., 25 miles away in their carriages and sat up on top of a hill to watch the battle unfold, thinking that this would be the one and only chance that people would have to experience combat. And it was so close to uh, Washington, D.C., of course, that some claim to have heard the cannon fire. And I can believe that, having heard some of the uh, cannons fired here. Uh, it's actually July 22nd today, so uh, the day after the anniversary of the battle. And so there's a lot of things still going on here on the battlefield. But it's relatively quiet here on Matthews Hill. Most of the tourist activity takes place behind me, about a mile or two uh, from here at Henry Hill where the climactic parts of the battle took place. But here on the morning of July 21st, the Union Army under the command of Brigadier General Irvin McDowell, 13,000 of his men, he had actually uh, brought around in what he thought would be a successful flanking maneuver around the Confederate force. He placed a few uh, brigades uh, at the Stone Bridge, which we will visit here in just a little bit, as kind of a feint. And then the idea was to bring the bulk of his force around, flank the Confederate Army, destroy them, and win the American Civil War. That was the idea, anyway. Of course, it didn't happen that way. Uh, these were all relatively new troops, very little experience, even among the officers. And so, as they came through the woods behind me, or in front of me, it'd be behind you, uh, the lead elements of the Union Army, which had been spread out over about six miles because of the lack of experience and the lack of proper discipline. Uh, they clashed with some Confederate skirmishers. Eventually, McDowell was able to bring up enough of his force to smash the Confederate lines here on Matthews Hill and push them back down into the valley between Matthews Hill and Henry Hill behind me. And uh, as I will show you later on, some Confederate reinforcements came and made the decision to buy time by marching down into that valley to hit McDowell's force head on. They bought time for St uh, Thomas Jackson to form a, a defensive line up on top of Henry Hill and there earn his nickname, Stonewall Jackson. Men from 23 different states fought here at the first battle of Bull Run. Some very famous names later on in the war got their first experience of Civil War combat here. People like uh, William Tecumseh Sherman, uh, people like Thomas Jackson, men who had fought in the Mexican War but got their first uh, combat uh, brigade level or higher command here at the Battle of Bull Run. Uh, of course, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of mistakes were made, men firing on their own men more often than any other time in the war. But by the time it was said and done, 5,000 men from both sides had fallen, making it by far the bloodiest battle in American history to that point. And it was after that that both sides knew it would not be an easy war and it would take a long time for uh, the contest to be decided. In fact, it ended up being four years. So let's take a look around at the battlefield. This is the view that the Confederate skirmishers would have had looking down from Matthews Hill toward the Union soldiers from Irvin McDowell's flanking column of about 13,000 men that was moving into position. They were coming out of those woods when they first made contact with Confederate skirmishers. And right here began the first major engagement of the American Civil War, uh, the first major part of the Battle of Bull Run as it became known in the north, the Battle of Manassas as it became known in the south, eventually first Bull Run, first Manassas because of a later battle fought here. But it all began right here on Matthews Hill.
That is way off in the distance where you see the white building. That is actually the visitor center, uh, which sits atop Henry Hill. The wooden building that you see in front of it is the later structure that was built, the Henry home, uh, on that hill. But that's, of course, where the majority of the fighting took place at the end of the battle, uh, looking here from what became the Union position. Well, I'm standing here uh, in the middle of the bridge that runs over Bull Run Creek. You can see the creek behind me. Uh, this is the western side of the bridge. Um, to my left would be the side from which, right here, would be the side from which the Union uh, would have been coming. Of course, they did launch a minor uh, attack in this direction. There were artillery about a half a mile uh, to that direction that fired on the Confederate position. But, of course, that was all a ruse. It was all a feint. It was meant to draw the Confederate attention while the real Union attack actually went around to my right. Uh, would have been around the Confederate left uh, under uh, Irvin McDowell. He took about 13,000 men, the majority of his army, uh, to try and outflank the Confederate army. So really very little fighting took place here at the Stone Bridge. Uh, the bridge was really kind of unnecessary in that the, the creek, though it is a, a fairly thick one, uh, you can't tell how deep it is from here, but it's wide. I mean, it, it's, it's actually wider than I thought it would be. And part of that might just be because there's been some rain today. I don't know. But uh, it's, it's a significant body of water. And uh, the Union Army ended up being able to cross, wade through it about waist deep uh, and cross through the other side. But it did take some time for that to take place. But I'll give you a good view of what the bridge looks like. This bridge was actually built in 1884, the one that I'm crossing, but it, it resembles pretty much the bridge that would have been here in 1861. Uh, in March of 1862, the Confederates actually destroyed this bridge as they uh, left this area. So it would have been destroyed before the second battle of Bull Run. There is the, uh, the, the bridge that's used by vehicles today, which is right next to this stone bridge. And you can see the water there. Uh, I'm looking now from what would have been the Confederate side of the bridge looking toward the what would have been the Union position at this part of the field. So behind me, you can see the house there in the distance. That is the Henry House. This is Henry House Hill, or Henry Hill, as it's sometimes known. Next to that is the cemetery where the widow Henry is buried. She was killed during the first battle of Bull Run, the only civilian casualty. She was in the upstairs of not that house. That's a, a later uh, building that was placed. The original Henry House was gone by the time of the second battle of Bull Run, had been completely destroyed. Um, there are some sketches of what it looked like after the first battle, but she was killed. She was buried just outside uh, of the house, but it was here on the morning of July 21st, 1861, that uh, General Bernard B. of the Confederate Army uh, had arrived with his brigade, I think four, uh, I believe he had four regiments in it, and in the extreme distance there, and I'll get a closer look, is actually Matthews Hill. It's about a mile or so away, and uh, it was there that the... Uh, the first major fighting took place at the first battle of Bull Run, and the Confederates were losing. Uh, they were under heavy pressure by the Union Army. They were starting to fall back, and when uh, Bernard B. arrived here that morning at around 10.30, he had a decision to make. 
He could stand here and try to form a defense on this hill, which was much better ground and a good de defensive position, uh, or he could advance and assist the other troops. And he made a decision to buy time for the army because he knew there were thousands more Confederate troops that were going to arrive uh, later in the day. Uh, and so he, he rushed his brigade forward. He bought an hour or so for the army and it ended up helping turn the tide of the battle because it bought time for Thomas Jackson to arrive to establish his brigade on this hill and to earn that famous nickname uh, Stonewall, which he received from General Bernard B. as his men were falling back through this position. So standing here um, just beyond the Henry Graves, and I'm standing on Henry Hill now, and behind me you can see Matthews Hill, and the Confederates who would have been standing here would have seen the action happening on Matthews Hill where the battle began. And uh, as the Confederates fell back from that position toward this position, then this is where uh, Stonewall Jackson and others decided to make their stand as they saw all of the action happening back there. So I'm here on Henry Hill, and uh, directly in front of me, be behind the camera from where you are, well, there's my daughter Rachel. Hey. Um, we're uh, very near to the house, the Henry house, and behind me is the grave here in the middle of Judith Henry, the widow Henry as she was known. She was the battle of, uh, the first battle of Bull Run's only uh, civilian casualty. She was in her bedroom, she was an invalid widow, and uh, she was killed when an artillery shot. Uh, hit the house and mortally wounded her. She died sometime very soon after and she's buried here just maybe 50 feet from the house. You want to go in? Yeah. Did they mark where someone was wounded? He, he eventually became the governor of South Carolina, so he was kind of an important person. It smells like smoke. Yeah, that's the campfire behind us.
Behind me, recognizable to anyone who's studied the Civil War at all, is of course a statue of uh, Brigadier General at the time, uh, Thomas Jonathan Jackson, uh, who had previously, just a few months before, been a professor at Virginia Military Institute. Not a very popular one at that. Uh, in fact, even at the early stages of the Civil War, his own men did not think too highly of Thomas Jackson. They called him Tom Fool. Um, but of course he quickly changed that reputation and it began here on July 21st, 1861. Stonewall Jackson, as he became to, uh, came to be known, brought his brigade, five Virginia regiments, uh, onto the field here at Manassas. And by this point, it was in the afternoon of July 21st. The Confederates had largely lost the battle to that point. And Jackson, uh, I'm standing uh, in front of what it would have what would have been the center of his line. And uh, a popular misconception about the Battle of Bull Run, uh, when people think of uh, Stonewall Jackson holding Henry Hill, uh, they think, as I did uh, before coming here, that uh, the Confederates were on top of the hill and the, and the Union was attacking up the hill. That is not at all the case as you come here and see the battlefield. And I'll show you in just a minute what I mean by that. Uh, the battle was largely fought on top of the hill. Uh, the Confederates were pretty much at the back end of the top of the hill, and the Union's position was also on top of the hill. And uh, you can kind of see, as I'll show in just a minute, the uh, artillery duel that happened between the Union and the Confederates prior to that final attack. You can see the Union guns uh, behind me, and then you'll be able to see the Confederate guns over here. And it was right at the edge of the woods is actually where the Confederates had their position. But of course, it was here that General Bernard B. rallied his troops as they fell back from Matthews Hill with the cry, uh, there's Jackson standing like a stone wall, rally behind the Virginians. B. was mortally wounded soon after and was never able to be asked exactly what he meant by that. There was some, uh, some who argued that he was actually insulting Jackson's troops. Uh, I tend to believe that was not the case. Uh, whatever the reason, uh, it became a badge of honor. Jackson always insisted that it was a name that was deserved by the brigade and not him personally, though it was inherited by both. Uh, so let's take a look. So right, right where those folks are walking, that's actually uh, pretty much where the Union position was during the final phases of the battle for Henry Hill. You can see the um, the hill the hill house the henry hill house that uh was actually built after the war right there uh and they're actually firing a cannon over there and man is it loud even from here um way back in the distance then is matthews hill uh but the the, the union position was there uh, along that ridge where folks are walking here you have the stonewall jackson statue but it's all the way uh, okay right there that monument uh is actually the monument that marks the spot where uh, bernard b was mortally wounded and then back here, uh, the artillery position is actually about where Stonewall Jackson's troop were, troops were initially when they first made their stand. Of course, they eventually advanced forward. And it was during that forward advance that uh, Bernard B. was mortally wounded. Stonewall Jackson was actually also wounded. He was shot in the hand. Um, but this is about where I'm standing is about the center of where Jackson's positions would have been as they advanced and routed the Union forces. So this tree where I'm standing uh, is not far from the Stonewall Jackson statue, which you can see behind me there. Uh, this spot actually marks where Colonel Francis Bartow was mortally wounded, leading the 7th Georgia in the counterattack against the, Confed or the Union troops at the end of the battle. And just uh, not long after, about six weeks after the battle, uh, his men came back and placed a monument here to Colonel Bartow. It became the very first monument uh, on a Civil War battlefield in September of 1861. That monument is now gone. This stone is the base of what was once that monument. A new one was placed uh, about 80 or so years ago that marks the spot where Francis Bartow fell.